Thank you very much. It's my great pleasure to uh, participate in this uh, panel and uh, uh, to come back. Thank you very much to co come back to India after several years of absence and first time to uh, Bengaluru and sh share my views on uh, the, uh, the topic competition law and patent law uh, with you. Um, I wanted to talk about the hottest topic which involves both fields of law, uh, competition law and uh, patent law, the question um, under which circumstances a patentee can enforce its patent against uh, its standard essential patent uh, against a competitor uh, who is more or less willing uh, to take a license um, uh, in order to be entitled to use this patent. Um, if we talk about uh, special, this special legal situation, we have to be aware of the fact that according to German and European law, the patentee is as a rule entitled to injunctive relief if the patent is infringed, period. Uh, there is, as a rule, no judicial discretion to grant or refuse uh, an injunction. If the patent is infringed, um, uh, granting injunctive relief is a regular consequence of patent infringement. Nevertheless, the non, the infringer, the non-licensee, so to speak, may nevertheless be entitled to a license because the patentee is in a dominant position. Uh, that is, its patent gives him the possibility uh, to dominate a certain market. And this dominance may, that is a competition law aspect, this dominance may have certain consequences uh, on uh, the patent rights. Okay, I will do it this. Um, according to German law, a competition law defense is general admissible against the patentee's request for injunctive relief. That uh, was decided by my court, the Bundesgerichtshof, in 2009. And the same is true in all other European countries. Uh, according to a decision of the European Court of Justice, the Court of Justice of the European Union, um, uh, which decided uh, the question in the very same way in its famous Huawei versus CTE a decision rendered July 2015. Um, both courts came to the conclusion that enforcement of a both courts decided that enforcement of a cease and desist claim may constitute an, abu uh, constitute an abuse of a dominant market position um, if a market dominating company refusing a patent license contract discriminates a company seeking a license, which is usually available to similar companies, or unfairly impedes the license-seeking company. So, um, both uh, possibilities based on competition law are available, discrimination and unfair impediment. If a company is in a dominating position, it must not discriminate another uh, company and it must not unfairly impede uh, a, a competitor. And refusing a license to a party which is willing 
um, to become a licensee of a standard essential um, uh, patent may be discriminating and it uh, may be an unfair impediment of this party. Um, it is necessary to, to uh, grant a claim for discrimination or unfair impediment. Uh, it is necessary that the uh, ownership of the patent constitutes a market dominating position. That is not self-evident. Even if the patent is standard essential, it is not uh, uh, even a standard essential patent does not give necessarily a dominating position. It depends, as always in competition law, it depends completely on market definition. Uh, so the owner of a standard essential patent may be in a dominant position or may be not in a uh, dominant position. It depends on the circumstances uh, of the individual case and especially the, the importance of the standard. Is, is it necessary to use the standard to, to produce or sell a certain product? If it is necessary, uh, the result may be a dominant position uh, of the owners of this really standard essential patents. If not, uh, the situation is different. Um, that was developed uh, in more details in the Huawei ZTE decision by the uh, Court of Justice of the European Union, which said in those circumstances, that means if the patentee is in a dominant position, in those circumstances and having a regard to the fact that an undertaking to grant licenses on friend terms creates legitimate expectations on the part of third parties, that the proprietor of the standard essential patent will in fact grant licenses on such terms, on French friend terms, a refusal by the proprietor of the SEP to grant a license may constitute an abuse uh, within the meaning of Article 102 of the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union, TFEU, um, uh, and Article uh, 102 is a provision that prohibits um, discrimination or unfair impediment of competitors by a dominant uh, um, competitor. Um, and it follows that having regard uh, to the legitimate expectations created, the abusive nature of such a refusal to grant a license may raise in defense to action for a prohibitory injunction. Um, in, but what are, are the conditions um, uh, to um, conclude uh, for, for concluding um, an abuse of dominance? Um, the proprietor of a standard essential patent must comply with conditions which seek to ensure a fair balance between the interests concerned. Between the interests of both parties, the patent owner on the one hand and the competitor, the willing licensee on the other hand, we do not speak only about obligations of the patentee. There are also obligations of the other side of the competitor and both parties have to uh, comply with this, uh, these obligations uh, to find a balanced result in this conflict. Um, and the um, uh, court says that due account must be taken of the specific legal and factual circumstances of the individual case. Um, especially, um, it's not only um, the willing licensee whose rights have to be protected, it's uh, also the patentee um, 
uh, whose right to enforce its patent has to be uh, protected. Uh, and the uh, Court of Justice of the European Union stressed uh, that um, the patentee uh, has a right to effective judicial protection, including the right of access to a tribunal. And I think that was said by the U uh, Court of Justice um, of the European Union having regard uh, to the former approach of the European Commission, which uh, take at the very beginning, uh, took at the very beginning of uh, uh, those cases uh, a bit one-sided view on the conflict uh, between the uh, involved interests. Um, so the proprietor may not be deprived of the right to have recourse to legal proceedings. So the, the conflict has to be resolved if the parties cannot do it on their own, uh, have to uh, be resolved in court proceedings, not in administrative uh, um, 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 proceedings. Um, even if the um, competitor who uh, wish to use the standard essential patent is entitled uh, to a license, he is required to obtain a license prior to any use. That was stressed by the European Court of Justice in Huawei versus CTE. Um, as I've said, the balanced approach uh, of uh, CJU and Bundesgerichtshof impose obligations on uh, both sides. Uh, for the patentee, that means that before bringing an action for injunctive relief, the patentee must alert the alleged infringer of the infringement um, uh, complained about by designating the infringed SEP uh, and specifying the way in which it has been infringed. First step. Then, the alleged infringer must express its willingness to conclude a licensing agreement on front terms. Second step. And then, it is for the proprietor of this SEP to present to that uh, alleged infringer a specific written offer for a license on front terms in accordance with the undertaking given to the standardization body, the French declaration specifying in particular the amount of the royalty and the way in which that royalty is to be calculated. Third step, then, um, uh, because, uh, uh, and the CJU gave, gives some explanation why uh, that has to be done. Um, uh, the court said um, it can be expected uh, that a patentee who gave a friend declaration will make such an offer and in the absence of a public standard licensing agreement and where uh, licensing, uh, licensing agreements already concluded are not made public, the proprietor of the SEP is better placed uh, to, to uh, check uh, the uh, usual and uh, appropriate conditions of such a, um, um, agreement um, and uh, uh, to, to define non-discriminatory um, conditions of the agreement because he knows uh, uh, what the conditions of the um, uh, agreements are which he has, uh, uh, he or she has already concluded. Um, then, after that, it is for the alleged infringer diligently to respond to that offer in accordance with recognized commercial practices in the field and in good faith. Um, that means, should the alleged infringer not accept the offer uh, of the patentee, it may rely on the abusive nature of an action only if it has submitted to the proprietor of the SAP promptly and in writing a specific counteroffer that corresponds to front terms. Um, both offers, the offer of the patentee and the offer uh, of the um, 
uh, willing licensee, so to speak, willing licensee, uh, must be binding and unconditional so that the agreement is concluded if the other party agrees to uh, the offer that uh, was said in the Orange Book standard decision of my court and is still valid, I think. Uh, there is one caveat. Uh, the willing licensee may nevertheless contest that the patent which is to be licensed is really used. So you have, so you may, at the very end, you may have a license uh, agreement but make no use of the uh, 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 patent that is possible. Um, uh, and uh, it makes, nevertheless, it makes um, um, uh, a sense to conclude the agreement because you never know what the courts will decide. Perhaps the court will come to the conclusion the patent is used. You think it's not used, but the court uh, thinks differently. So uh, it makes sense to have an agreement anyway. And then you may, uh, if you uh, can't find, a, if you cannot negotiate a solution, uh, it may, uh, at the very end, it may be on the court to this decide whether the licensed patent is really used or not. Um, and uh, furthermore, the willing licensee may challenge the validity of the patent, uh, but the consequence is as always in um, uh, 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 license uh, uh, law, it will have no consequence uh, until um, uh, the patent is finally revoked by the competent court. Um, Furthermore, there is one, uh, 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 one further obligation of the willing licensee um, where the alleged infringer uses a, a patent before the agreement has been concluded. Uh, it is for the alleged infringer um, to provide appropriate security um, uh, to the uh, patentee, the calculation of that security must include the number of the infringing actions, uh, the, the infringing products sold, um, and the alleged infringer must be able to render an account in respect of those acts of use. There are some uh, open questions uh, which are currently discussed in Germany and uh, are several um, um, uh, court proceedings uh, before the courts of first and second uh, instance uh, and there is one pending appeal before uh, the Bundesgerichtshof, the Federal Supreme Court, uh, which uh, may be decided uh, in the course of uh, this year. Um, one uh, central question is what happens um, if the willing licensee uh, considers the patentee's first offer to be non-friend, um, um, may uh, it refuse a counter offer or is it nevertheless obliged uh, to respond to the uh, offer by the patentee? And same question, what happens if the patentee considers the willing licensee's counter offer to be non Friend, is a patentee obliged to a further uh, um, um, counter offer? And third, um, may or must the offer or must not uh, the offer be extended to a patent portfolio or can or should uh, or must it be restricted uh, to the patent uh, in suit um, which is uh, allegedly uh, infringed um, by the um, um, by the um, uh, willing licensee. Um, if we go back to um, to this slide which uh, quotes uh, two um, paragraphs of the CJEU um, decision, um, I personally, as it sets my uh, strictly personal view, I think the, the answer is uh, quite, uh, quite clear. Um, the court said, as I have mentioned, 
it is for the alleged infringer diligently to respond to that offer, that is the patentee's first offer, uh, in accordance with recognized commercial practices in the field and in good faith. And if you negotiate, and if you want to negotiate a license agreement, and you, you got a first offer from the would-be licensor, and you think this offer is much too high, what will you do? Will you refuse to uh, to give a counter offer, or will you tell the uh, uh, licensor that you think his uh, uh, or her offer is much too high and make a counter offer. I think that is a natural and uh, common consequence of an offer you think it, it is too uh, high and that is uh, completely in uh, accordance with commercial practice, uh, recognized commercial practice and, and good faith. And that that is true is indicated by a second view on the next uh, paragraph of the CJEU uh, decision because the court says, should the alleged infringer not accept the offer, the first offer, it may rely on the abusive nature of an action only if it submits a counter offer. If the first offer were a completely friend offer, there were no abusive nature of the action to rely on anyway. It, the, I think the second, uh, this second, uh, this uh, paragraph 66 makes only sense if you uh, consider the situation that the first offer is not completely in accordance uh, with the friend obligations and the action may be abusive, but nevertheless, um, uh, the, uh, the, the willing licensee is obliged to a counter offer. And that makes completely sen uh, sense because it's very difficult for a court to decide what the, uh, re what the friend uh, conditions of an uh, individual case really are. Uh, parties are better placed uh, to negotiate um, the final conditions of a, a license agreement. And the whole idea of uh, the standard book uh, decision of the Bundesgates of my court and the Huawei ZTE uh, uh, conditions um, of the CJEU is that the, these no negotiations should be facilitated and should take place in an environment which ensures that uh, the um, um, patentee uh, cannot abuse uh, its dominant position. Uh, but that does not mean that um, the other side uh, is not obliged, has not similar obligations to uh, comply with. Um, um, license conditions which parties do not agree on should be negotiated. Um, and same is true for the other situation if the uh, patentee does not uh, accept the counter offer of the willing licensee. That has al already been said in the Orange Book standard decision and I do not think that the CJU does not uh, agree with the statement. If the willing licensee makes an offer on customer terms, the patentee can only claim that it does not have to accept a, a specific clause or the royalty uh, rate if it offers an alternative clause uh, or an alternative royalty rate in accordance with its obligation under competition law. Um, and there's an, uh, another opportunity to facilitate uh, a solution. The willing licensee may offer a license agreement um, providing, according to section 115, uh, 315 of the German Civil Code, for royalties to be determined by patentee's discretion rather than a specific royalty rate and then deposit an amount that the willing licensee deems appropriate under competition law. The advantage of this solution is 
that the court may roughly determine the appropriate, only roughly, determine the appropriate royalty rate and assess whether the escrow deposit is prima facie sufficient. If so, the court may dismiss, dismiss the, the action for infringement and then the parties may uh, 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 negotiate the final amount uh, of um, uh, the license fees of the royalty rate. There may be another lawsuit about the final uh, amount of uh, uh, royalties, but then that will uh, be independent uh, of, the, of the patent infringement action, and uh, that is uh, an, at least uh, an advantage uh, for for. Um, for solving the problem that the competitor must comply with the standard in order to be in a position to, uh, to produce standard compatible products and, and, uh, and the patentee on the other hand is insured uh, by the um, uh, escrow deposit uh, is insured that he will uh, at the very end he will um, um, uh, get um, an appropriate amount of money. Um, Orange Book Standard and Huawei versus CTE offer a system for balancing the interests of patentee and patentee uh, uh, of the patentee and uh, of the willing licensee. Neither uh, a decision solved the main problem, the substantive assessment of friend conditions, but uh, I think it's, uh, that is a hard task for the uh, courts and should be better be done uh, um, um, by uh, the parties in negotiations, by arbitration or in any uh, other way. At the very end, Friesen's, a friend license is what the market under conditions of undistorted competition deems to be friend. There is no objective friend rate. Friend is what, what an undistorted, uh, what, what, what the market under, undis, uh, under conditions of undistorted competition deems to be friend. And portfolio uh, licensing may be closer to real life uh, than uh, licensing of a single uh, patent uh, uh, which is part of a bunch of more, um, several hundreds or even thousands of uh, patents, so it's, I think it's easier to find a portfolio license than an appropriate um, uh, um, a li a license fee for a single um, patent. Um, um, the decisive question in patent infringement proceeding is not whether the patentee abused its dominant position by bringing an action without alerting the infringer before he did so, the decisive question is whether it does so, whether the patentee abuses its dominant position at the end of all proceedings before the trial court, because that is the decisive uh, situation. Um, so uh, the CGEU scheme of alert, offer, and counteroffer should not be seen as a static condition, as static conditions of granting or refusing injunctive relief, but as a dynamic framework. So the court should, in principle, try to facilitate um, uh, the negotiations uh, of the parties, should allow them to amend their respective offer as long as they act in good faith, and um, at the very end, um, um, the court proceedings uh, uh, in, in, in the the best solution is that the court proceedings uh, facilitates a negotiated result of the conflict. Thank you very much.